What's up? It's Sunday the 24th, July of 2020. We had a pretty interesting week. As we saw the markets were trending upward through the middle and Wednesday and then they sort of went down a good bit with looks like some more tensions with or against I should say uh, China as well as now the most valuable car company in the world Tesla actually reported a surprise profit but we saw their shares go down in price as it's, their stock appeared to be too expensive and had such a big run up in such a short amount of time anyways so I didn't really see a justifiable reason even with the beat for them to go up in price drastically anyways but yeah another interesting week just a reminder for people to not be investing large amounts in proportion to their available cash flow that they have for investing and to always do your due diligence before buying selling or otherwise investing in any sort of equity or derivative invest wisely so we're gonna do another randomized stock pick here's all I still have about 50 or so stocks to pick it'd be cool if I could actually get all of these done but Caterpillar, Cat, C A T, construction firm. I've been watching them for probably a decade or so. So this should be very fun. I know they're fairly expensive for an average investor, so we'll see are they worth the price and how well they rank on this tier list. Caterpillar, stock symbol C A T. They're one of the largest construction companies in the world. They make machinery, engines, and they also have financial products and even apparel products. Wikipedia actually has them as the world's largest equipment construction manufacturer. Um, they're a Fortune 100 company, and they were founded almost a century ago so their roots go back deep and they trace their roots back to the merger back in the 1920s of Holt Manufacturing and CL Best they've had a bunch of lawsuits in the past about a century ago when they were fighting mostly over intellectual property which costed them millions tens of millions or more dollars so they eventually just decided to merge with each other and settle their differences and just within the past decade they've relocated from Peora, Peoria, Illinois to Deerfield, Illinois which is near Chicago by the way they got their roots and their name Caterpillar because people would say that their machinery tends to move like that of a caterpillar the insect so they actually have a very interesting history I'm not gonna get too much into that because that doesn't necessarily affect here you can see Wikipedia's financial data which isn't as reliable as some companies that actually focus on the financials a few years back was taken over by Jim Umpleby who's been with the company for nearly three decades. Here we have their recent 10Q or quarter one 2020 courtesy of Edgar at sec.gov. I'm not gonna break down the details of this, but you can just see, here's their sales and revenue of machinery was $9.9 .9 billion. Comp down looks like almost 20, or so percent like 22 percent or something from the prior year as their financials products was down not as bad 
compared to last year and you can see their total of sales and revs were down drastically from a year ago as I'm sure they probably will have COVID as being as their main excuse so I'm not going to break every single one of these down but if you want you can pause the video and look at this and make your personal evaluations it's a very interesting document I highly recommend reading these fully if you're considering buying shares in any company prior to buying it. So here's directly from the Caterpillar's website where you can see latest Q1 2020 back in April of this year where yeah so the revenue and shares sales were down 21 percent compared to a year ago you can check out this really cool powerpoint prez that they presented at the quarterly report so yeah co here's their covid response um 10 million in covid relief efforts good job how they're trying to respond and improve to the catastrophe that we've all witnessed and as you can see sales margins and profit per share was down vastly compared to a year ago but yeah very interesting slideshow to browse through if you have time I'd suggest doing so before purchasing shares Here's some of their main products, or categories I should say, and then of course here's their store, online store at least, where you can see apparel, some toys for youngins, miscellaneous products, I've never actually worn any of their apparel but it looks durable and high quality. available on Amazon and of course one of their main products is tractors which I'm sure you've seen on almost any construction site nearby at your local or distant towns and here's Ranker obviously not a site that you'd use to do stock research on but I just thought it'd be interesting to see what the citizens of the world think and their own personal opinions ranking the best tractor brands so yeah John Deere huge name we've all heard of them some other ones and they have Caterpillar down here at number six Lamborghini is in here I thought that was cool I wanted to do one last ranking before I actually get into the fundamental analysis here is iseekplant.com.au thanks to Zoe Shari, search marketing manager, who she ranks the top 10 heavy equipment manufacturers. And by the way, this was updated a few months back. So yeah, you can see the global construction equipment manufacturing market is expected to reach about $230 billion in this year compared to 182 billion back in 2016 with a compound annual growth rate of 6.2 percent in those four years so here's some of the big names I'm sure you've heard of maybe even in some other industries like Hitachi, Volvo but they actually have Caterpillar as number one Hitachi here big name John Deere they have a nine and this, before you take this too literally, it's from 2017, so it's a few years back. But I'm sure a lot of the numbers and data should be somewhat uh, comparable. So obviously Caterpillar taking the main share for heavy equipment. And then you see John Deere here at only 3.5% and, and then others taking the majority. But yeah, they do have, or had back in 2016... They, as they say, a massive 16.5% market share. 
I thought these were some really cool, powerful photos. I wanted to show them. There's John Deere. They're really getting the environment backdrops captured very well in these photos. Here's Caterpillar. We'll start the fundamental analysis. As you can see, they closed Friday at $137.5 a share, slightly up um, on the week. Looks like they're up a few dollars on the month. They're actually recovering a good bit up about $25, so about 18%. Six months they're flat after taking a huge COVID hit in mid to late March. And on one year they're about flat. Five years they're up. They've been doing really good throughout the Trump presidency. As we all know, he's a big fan of infrastructure and keeping jobs and companies in America, which allows Caterpillar to benefit greatly from. They're a large cap company, about $75 billion worth. Very low safe beta, but slightly higher than the market. Really good PE ratio, earns per share very high up there, 9.5, really good number to see. Even for a semi-expensive company, they're in the upper range of their yearly share price. Looks like the volume has been a bit lower than the average, but that you'll typically see when a share price is rising in recent weeks. Price target, the amp that Yahoo is showing is slightly below what they're trading at now. They do pay a dividend of respectable 3.02%. You just missed the X div last week chart so let's see max as far back as it goes 1962 as far back as it goes and what a great price back when at one point believe it or not they were actually sub double digit dollars which of course inflation adds a lot of value to that nowadays but still would have been a great buy if you got them back in the IPO interestingly they did not pay dividends it looks like almost the majority of the 70s then they had a stock split here in mid 70s and then they finally started paying dividends again back in 1981 so almost the whole decade of the 1970s they didn't pay any dividends pretty interesting check out these stats so this is quarterly but as you can see their market cap has shrink, shrunk prior to year ago quarter along with their enterprise value price to book is about four times this is showing profit margin trailing 12 months in up margin which is solid for a highly expensive to run company about 51 billion revenue in the past year but obviously rev and earnings growth as you can see were down vast majority of their shares are in the float only 0.2 percent of the shares are held by insiders not necessarily an attractive number that you'd like to see so that not i'm not necessarily a fan of only two percent of 0.2 percent of shares being held by insiders but again it's company that's been around for a century so there's been plenty of time for the shares to switch hands they do have six billion cash on hand book value is twenty six dollars it's a respectably high number they do have nearly seven billion of op cash flow and you can see this last stock split was two for one over a decade ago here's some financials here we can actually see the annual yeah, it looks like 53 billion last year, which is slowly down from two years ago by about a billion dollars, but definitely much higher from prior years. As their operating expensive expenses actually went down, which is pretty good for a company to be able to 
adjust their expenditures and bring in more income in terms of percentage of their revenue. And we can check out balance sheet. Looks like you got seventy billion dollars assets, liabilities, cash flow. I'm not gonna analyze all this, but and we'll check out quarterly. So you can see the number that we already saw that they reported to the SEC and shareholders publicly. And then here's some analysts projections. Let's look at revenue. So they are expecting growth in terms of revenue by about nine and a half percent for next year out of 19 analysts. Out of the 20 or so analysts, earnings per share trend, that's a large growth in earnings per share for next year compared to the current year. So people are expecting a recovery in the infrastructure and CAT specifically in the next year. Be interesting to see if such is true. Here's a really cool site for doing some deep research, Guru Focus. If you can make an account, I'd highly recommend using them as a source to do some analysis for stock picking. But yeah, here's a cool page that I found. It shows Caterpillar holding nearly 49% of the farm and heavy construction machinery industry and then John Deere just over a quarter and then all these other names Pat Carr is a good company see here you can see them along with their peers and if you want you can compare all these you can pause the page if you want I'm not gonna go and an analyze all of this because it's so much to take in But yeah, you can see the dividend is nearly, Caterpillar has nearly double the average dividend compared to their competitors. So much data you can analyze on this one page alone. And then I have another page for Guru Focus. Such beautiful graphics and data. If you have time to study these. Again, I'm not going to analyze all of this, but you can just see all these ratios compared to their industry and versus their history. You can see their cash is going up. This is every year, annually. The amount of cash is going up as we see the debt fluctuate in the high 30s typically to low 40s. Then their net income, four and looks like five, three and four years ago, they actually did not do too great on net income wise, but their revenue has somewhat fluctuated up and down. Hopefully they can bring them back up on the next year. As we saw earlier, a lot of analysts project their top line and bottom line to grow drastically once them and all of their buyers are willing to spend more on their heavy equipment. You can see there's a the huge price drop using the Peter Lynch earnings line back in a mid to late March. Insider trading looks like a lot of sales past three years, past year only showing cells. Then here's some big names. Some deep dive analysis. Highly recommended guru focus. Here we're on Seeking Alpha, another great resource to do some analysis on your stocks prior to buying. They also have a pretty cool app I highly uh, recommend checking out. 
So here we can check out their peers, a more easily readable comparison. It's not as deep as the other resource we just checked out, but regardless, it's a brief comparison. You can see they're second out of these four behind 3M, who obviously makes way more products and has a vastly broad range of industries that they're involved in but cat does have the most wall street analysts and you can see all of them are down compared to their 52 week highs here we can see they have definitely recovered from their 52 week lows so you might have missed out on that opportunity already if there does happen to be another big drop in the markets in the coming months if and then revenue growth, they're all down except this general dynamics. Yeah. Who else is also involved in military? Yeah, because defense. Which I do see lots of potential in the coming years for the defense, defensive sector or industry. This is not necessarily a good thing to see on a five year CAGR revenue growth that are down. I don't want to see positivity like in all of these competitors here. Three years positive, so maybe they're, I know they have made a new, they have gotten their new CEO within that time frame between right around here, so maybe he'll make the necessarily adjustments this and next year to get them back in some growth. Here you can see the breakdowns of the returns on price per share and the time frames 10 years so it looks like the S&P is actually pretty sure beat doubled in 10 years so you might as well just help held them. you'd have to be very timely on your purchases of cat especially prior to buying them which such is true for any company, but especially a company that has a low beta and not necessarily growing in the past five years in terms of revenue, and also who has a decent amount of dependency on whether companies are willing to spend on their expensive machinery, equipment, engines, financial services. You can see their book value showing $12. I believe Yahoo had a higher number. But at least they're not negative like Triple M or General Dynamics. And you can see their CapEx, Capital Expenditures, is down. Almost $3 billion, so they're not really spending as much. And this is trailing 12 months, by the way. Which is good. You don't necessarily want a company to be spending vastly and times like these so we know that the management is definitely making the right decisions in that sense here we'll check out MSN money powered by Microsoft some bars if you're a fan of bars or candlesticks I should say and they're kind of trading essentially just with S&P along with the majority of other companies other than techs and energy who traded vastly different than S&P especially this year but one thing I found kind of funny is that uh I guess because their company is Caterpillar <laughs> seems like they're getting a lot of news because of actual Caterpillars the animal and their headlines even though their products can literally just squash a caterpillar and disintegrate it they're pretty much the opposite of a caterpillar but regardless analysis one of my favorite resources for data scroll down management effectiveness and one of the most underrated data that I have found is looking at income per employee mainly because employees are one of the highest expenses that companies can typically have aside from high 
cost product and service companies like Caterpillar, but regardless, as you can see, income per employee is nearly half a gr hundred grand. And what is that, four or five or six X times the industry? Doing vastly better than peers within their industry. Despite the fact that they are a high cost product uh, company. And here we have Market Beat. Thought it'd be cool to at least check out the options chain. So, as we know, they're about $137 a share and they do trade weekly options. These are typical prices that you'd see for stock of this caliber and price to be. Looks like there's yeah, a decent amount of interest for the calls, slightly above price. Large interest here, 144 for some reason. This is just next week. And then we'll look at the puts. Some decent interest is this will obviously fluctuate and vary once the business day opens on Monday. But there is some interest. Seems like though overall there was more calling interest, if I'm not mistaken. The numbers just seem larger. So it'll be interesting to see how they move next week. Also, I wanted to see their report earnings on July 31st, which is actually Friday. Yeah, Friday of next week. So that'll be a big day for them. Could be an indicator of how their industry is doing since they control such a large percent of the construction and machinery equipment industry itself. So we're here now on Binviz, Financial Visualizations, one of my more favorite resources to do some research on. And I am a fan of the fact that they actually utilize the entire page from left to right, as opposed to some of these other resources who kind of want to spam their viewers with ads. They do have ads, but it's not as spammy, so I am a fan of that. But well, regardless, here we can see all these numbers we already looked at, for the most part. Margins are pot really good, as we already knew. Here's some recent analyst projections. Let's see. Here we have Bank of America upgrading them uh, earlier this month, as well as Deutsche Bank upgrading them with a price target of 166 which is $30 higher than what they're at now, around. And then in COVID times, they were getting a lot of downgrades. And then as you can see, pre-COVID, they were getting upgrades. Not too many big headlines for them. By the way, they are a Dow 30 component, so that's a big deal. And here's some insider trades. So we saw just a lot of sales, not too many buys as of recent. Here we have tip ranks. They're typically a very harsh critic, so for them to give cat a seven is reputable. And as you can see, mostly bullish on bloggers and analysis. Tip ranks investors very negative though. Hedge funds kind of down, as well as insiders. So target range is pretty much exactly where they're sitting at now. So I'm sure a lot of people are afraid to give them bullish ratings in times like these. You can check out some insiders. And as we already knew, just lots of recent sells and option exercises. Here's some buys five months ago. All uninformative. And this is actually a politician right here. So that's interesting. Hedge fund activity. Wow. Is this zero star limited partnership increased by a thousand percent? But it's only 0.14% of the portfolio being a four and a half million. Ken Fisher is actually has a large portion of their shares, 0.81% at 
almost three quarters of a billion dollars worth. Bill Gates actually has over a billion dollars worth of cat. That's pretty interesting. I think that's actually the first time I've ever seen his name on the site. So, and they gave him four stars. Good job, Bill. Of course, Dalio fully liquidated his position. And the last quarter, I'm not sure when necessarily, but he liquidated his position. Obviously, one of the most famous and well-known fund managers at, and he sits at top Bridgewater Associates. So here's some of those pieces of equipment and machinery that they make. I'm sure you've seen lots of these around your local construction sites. Um, these do not come cheap, by the way. For example, we'll check out an excavator. Looks like they weigh about a ton. Just over a ton, in fact. Or multiple tons, depending on how much horsepower you need. And I wanted to check out the cost, because I was curious. Here's costowl.com. And obviously, don't take these prices literally. I'm sure they vary. But yeah, it looks like the cheapest excavator specifically can come in around 100 grand. With the most expensive demolition models, upwards of nearly a million dollars for one. And if you're on a budget, Caterpillar actually offers, you can see this video on the bottom right, a reman or remanufacturing department which sells high quality remanufactured components, products, equipment, which, as they say, are expected to last a decent amount of time at a discounted price. And we can check out Twitter. We'll see their um, we can see how well they do on their social media presence. So Caterpillar, more than 90 years, I want to say it's about 95 years now. Yeah, 95, as it says right here, right in my face. 95 years, this says on every continent. Hmm. Yep, based out of Deerfield, Illinois. They have 137,000 followers. They're posting, wow, multiple times a day. But they're not necessarily getting good engagement. People love stories, so I'm not surprised that this story is actually getting some engagement. And it's based off of the history. Here's some products that they make and sell. They do have a racing team, by the way. For NASCAR. You can check out some of their competitors. John Deere, 191,000. Looks like they're getting way better engagement. Maybe because it's ads, but still, like. Looks like they're. I mean, you kind of want your customers and fans to be selling the product for you almost. You shouldn't have to be begging them or be going that far out of your way to try and get engagement. And we'll check out one more. 3M, which obviously is way bigger company than CAD because they're way more well diversified and are involved in way more segments. Nearly one and a half million followers. Engagements about as good as John Deere which so as you can see the followers doesn't really truly make a difference you kinda want engagement to get the publicity and obviously you don't gauge a company's social media presence by how good a stock is but it just is one other aspect that you can do when doing some analysis caterpillar so I realize there's 
several hundred products and lots of services that I didn't even mention about Caterpillar. They're widely diverse within their industry. So just know that before don't think in the don't go thinking that they just focus on construction equipment. But I just wanted to analyze them fundamentally and financially. Play this cool little video right here about the company on the side while I'm talking about them. So Caterpillar. So we've we've analyzed the company, looked at their financials mostly, a little bit of their history. I find that they are very well managed. Um, by here's the CEO on the top right. Um, they are somewhat centralized on heavy equipment and machinery. They have a small portion of their revenue and income on financials very tiny portion on their apparel but they've been around for over a century they've lived through the Great Depression financial crisis and they have a very low beta so they're a safe company to want to be investing in for at least the mid and long term as we know they control a very large portion of their industry and heavy equipment and machinery. I would like to see them get more involved in the defensive sector as well as definitely AI and future technologies, maybe even some self-driving machinery and equipment that could potentially be operated without the direct handling of an actual human so that'd be cool to see if they'll make a move like that at some point because you know in the future it's going to be real it's just how soon but regardless they pretty much dominate their competition their direct competition very well positioned in the markets we'd like to see them make some potential acquisitions maybe to diversify themselves into other industries because we know they can't make any large acquisitions within their specific target industry because then they'd be clearly a monopoly and it'd just be a large hassle with the SEC. But I do like the company. I don't know if I've ever owned them, but they could be a good swing trade or long-term play because I'm sure that a lot of hedge funds, as we saw even Bill Gates owns them, a lot of hedge funds and large well-known investors are fans of them but I do see them lasting for a very long time where they have a respectable dividend the price may be a bit high at least temporarily and could be risky due to their clients not wanting to spend the money because they're wanting to put it elsewhere due to COVID so once that clears up though me as well as dozens of other analysts expect their revenue and income to grow next year as they recover along with the rest of a global economy but overall you'd think that they'd be an s or a tier due to being a dow 30 but just because the company is a dow 30 doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to be around forever or in the dow 30 for a very long time i do think they have some risks in the short term and they had some political risk, whereas if a state doesn't have the necessary funding or backing to put up the infrastructure, then they just won't be needing or buying the Caterpillar products. But I do really like this company. And I'll place them here <coughs> in the B tier because obviously they're a safe play. And I'd buy them for the long term, keep their dividends and maybe even just reinvest the dividends into the company as you can probably just swing trade buy when they're in their lower 52 week range and then sell it once they reach that peak I wouldn't necessarily buy them now because I do think they are closer to that 52 week high 
but it would be very interesting to see how they report their earnings. Expected to report this coming Friday. I don't necessarily expect them to be very volatile, maybe a small 1-2% to change based on what they report, whether it's good or bad. I would really like to see them get involved in some future-driven industries and maybe even make some acquisitions necessary to allow them to withstand the changing of times and also prevent new competition from potentially entering their industry. Thank you so much for watching and best wisely. Peace. Don't forget your face mask.